you do. Wonderful. So, Kerry, please um, share with us yeah. the next one, which is the new mini Libra phase. Okay. Well, well, when we're under the Libra and archetype, we see uh, we, we seek balance in all areas of our life, and we can oscillate between the extremes uh, of being totally in ourself or giving too much of ourselves away to others. And this depends where this is falling in your chart, what area it's falling. There's, there's, there's a, a lot of other things that this, um, how this energy will be activated in everybody's uh, chart differently um, because of, of, what's, of what's occurring uh, at the moment. So with Libra, there can be a sense of inner lack and therefore we have to fill that void with or we, we we're looking for something to fill that void uh, usually through external influences so when we relate this to money um, this can manifest by spending on things we may struggle to afford uh, in the hope we look more attractive to others and mistakenly try to fill that void uh, and we've lost ourselves because we've invested in something outside of us. Now, as I always say with our Moon podcast, you that, that security always comes from within first. You must have that inner security. So um, before experiencing balance, which is what uh, Libra is about, so the symbol of the scales, um, we must experience the extremes to know where we are out of balance. Now, in this, there is a tendency to beautify and embellish the polarity as we compare ourselves to others. And in this comparison of comparing ourselves, we can sometimes feel if it's more on the, uh, on the, um, the side, we can, we can um, mistakenly compare ourselves to someone and feel less than. Now, something um, that people must be aware of and really understand this, that you can't compare yourself to anybody, nobody. There is no one like you, no one. It's impossible to compare yourself with others. And when I was thinking of this, I reflected back, I think I was, I was talking to somebody when we used to go to the beach as, as um, youngsters, you know, and to me my comparison was Elle McPherson, a supermodel, a catwalk model who would come out of the, the surf like Hayley Berry in James Bond, you know, and she would come out, she would emerge out of the surf, this beautiful hair, body. I mean, Elle McPherson, I think, is six foot tall. And I would come out of the surf, all my hair would be one side. I've just got dumped. I've probably last, lost half my swimmers <laughs> because they're full of sand. And I'm trying to compare myself to this incredible person that is beyond mm. comparison and we we do that um uh and this is where um we need to find uh it, what the balance in in how we manifest that attraction uh, you know uh, the things that we simply don't have so even the thought of of comparing yourself to someone else is absurd if i can be a little bit more I suppose maternal. <laughs> you know, mm. yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So to balance these extremes, and you have to look at the extremes. A Libra is about extremes, you know. Uh, that's why we're always seeking that balance and trying to get harmony. Uh, we go to the opposing sign of Aries. So Aries shows us that one must have and understand the, the core connection we have to ourselves. Aries persuades us to honour and be loyal to our own nature while listening and learning from others. Libra also is the psychology of listening. Venus rules Libra. It's the planet where we're going to relate it to money. Venus is the outer expression of Libra. Venus is also the inner expression of Taurus, so it rules two planets. Um, the thing with listening to others is most of the time we don't want to listen to somebody else. We only want to uh, put our own version for, forward. But in relation to money, Libra loves all things beautiful, loves a beautiful home, clothes, cars. I mean, 
just as an aside, if somebody ever has the opportunity to visit your home, they will see how beautiful it is because you oh, have a Libran. Yes, yes, and you you have a Libran moon, so mm. there's this love of uh, you know um, the finer things in life uh, with uh, something that's distorted with with Libra and in regard to material things. Uh, these material things are often used as vehicles to make one more attractive to another. Now, whether that's to impress another person, to um, attract them romantically, whatever that is. And in doing this, uh, one can be swayed to overspending, putting finances out of balance and accruing more debt. A material thing never adds to your value. That comes from within you and how you feel about yourself. That's where the value comes from. Libra can be a great assistance in regards to money management and budgeting. And in order to find balance in our finances, we must become aware of where we are out of balance. And we know when we're out of balance. It's no, you know, you just know where you are. Um, and we have to make the necessary adjustments to put ourselves back on an even keel. So we can begin to listen to the messages of others' feedback and, you know, just, just consider what they're saying. And you might think, well, geez, you know, I might have to look at that. Or oh, they could be right. Excuse me for a minute. <coughs> Sorry. Um, they could be right. And that also that part of ourselves, that wise and knowledgeable, higher self, whatever you want to call that wise person that we have within us, uh, we listen to that as well. And another thing is advertisers. They're spell casters. They're trying to tempt you, seduce you, guilt you into buying their product with that false promise, really, that... Uh, it's going to make your life better by using their product or service. <clears throat> and one of the my favourites is, is that if I use certain moisturiser, I'm going to look like I'm 12. <laughs> that's the one. I, and I think, well, that's... But you do look like 12. You do. <laughs> you're so youthful and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. all this does really, in that, in that emotional um, moment, we can fall into that trap, and goodness knows I've fallen into it many, 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 many mm. times, but it really only puts you into more debt. And the other thing that is more damaging, in my opinion, and I use that word purposely, is that it threatens your inner security. Mm. Money especially, the uh, financial stress is one of the most, um, it, it shakes up our inner security and it can lead to all kinds of, things that are unavoidable, you know, with even illnesses. Mm. So be true to yourself, which, which is Aries, mm. and that's an expression of self-empowerment and we become more aware of our true value and meaning and we make our way to that midpoint. Mm. We, uh, we're in control and that, that is true security and self-empowerment. Mm, beautiful. Very well said. Thank you so much. The um, I love these words that you've shared at the end of your paper where it says, you know, like balancing or balance, harmony, exchange, psychological skills, listening, wisdom, justice, inner lack, growth and independence. Mm. So before I just share with you what I've written um, in response to that, one of the things that I'm doing now through this particular month, which is uh, I'm recording this on the 3rd of October, moving into the new moon of Libra on the 6th of October, is whenever I am out of balance within myself and I know that when I physically, when I eat something wrong, I start to bloat, therefore I'm out of balance. When somebody says something to me and I get this heated almost like a flame like in my being and it gets rattled and I just want to go and hit somebody. Sounds very airy. <laughs> I'm, I'm out of balance, you know. Yeah. And so what I'm trying to do is to find centre, it's to come back to centre, neither neither really angry or, or happy but just 
just finding some balanced state because it's only when I'm truly balanced within myself that I can actually come and give to people. So that's what I wanted to share at the, in, with this particular um, energy. So when we approach the subject of delegating money to a monthly budget, mm. it's so important to be in a calm and centred place. And there are two lessons I'd like to share. First is learn how to monitor for signs your calmness is about to be disturbed or triggered. So try to catch it beforehand. So when looking at each budget category, some may cause you emotional pain, regret and suffering. For an example, you might have credit card debt and you have, and the minimum payment that you have to do is $25 for the month. And when you allocate that $25, which I would encourage you to pay more than your minimum amount, in fact, I would forego all entertainment, all anything unnecessary and put it all off that debt. That is for another class and another story to tell. But in this particular instance, so say, for example, it's $25 and you're feeling uh, like, oh, you know, I could use that $25 and I want to put it on my credit card debt. You are being rattled. You're being triggered. So what are, what at that moment before you hand you do that, just just have a deep uh, breathe, just have a deep breathing sort of exercise and just calmly uh, talk, talk yourself down and say, well, you know, you did buy things on that credit card. You do have to pay it off and that's okay because the things that you purchased, you love. Whatever it is that you purchased, you may needed it or you wanted it, um, you have them in your possession. And so now the consequence of that is that you have to pay it off. And if all you can afford is that $25 monthly repayment, which is the minimum, then so be it, pay it and try and find a bit of like gratitude when you do it. Mm, yes. Don't let it rise in you, this resentment of paying it off. Mm. Just turn it because you have control of it. You have control over everything. If you're, if you're triggered by this emotion of like resentment because you did it, then go, hang on, observe it. Then go, but I bought so many wonderful things on that credit card. And then just turn that emotion around and be grateful and loving and kind to yourself with it. I remember hearing something, I can't remember where it was, but be grateful for your debt because once that debt is gone, you have that money, you could have that same debt in savings. So it's presenting itself to you that you have all this money because you're meeting your debt. And uh, uh, I remember when, uh, just a quick story, I don't know if they're still doing it, but banks, they aren't interested in you. They don't care about you. They want your money. And that minimum payment, that was worked out by oh, years and years ago in bank card in the early 80s. Could be even lot, uh, earlier than that. But there was a fellow in, in the United States on Wall Street and uh, they said, look, we're going to give people this car. They can have access to uh, our money, the bank's money, and then they have to pay it and they get a month to pay it. And he said, no, let's just charge them 2.5% of their purchases and have that as a minimum payment because that way we have an ongoing debt and we can keep charging interest and this is how they make their money. So, uh, you know, and th that whatever you're buying, you know, how long is that? You know, I always, I've always found that the fantasy of buying something far outweighs the actual buying of it. That's what I've found in my, uh, in my experience. But mm -hmm. um, having that independence, which is a very um, strong word in Libra, uh, of making your own decisions and being, having that discipline to do that as well. Um, it, will, it pays off in the end. It pays mm -hmm. huge dividends. Mm. in a very yeah. short period of time and that may be as my mum as mum had me in three months or six months or 12 months or whatever mm. yeah yeah yep that's cool excellent the um so if I, if I can just step back um a bit before that to Kerry um so when we're looking at our budget categories um and the emotions come through you need to identify identify these uh triggers and these emotions so that then you can address them. Mm. 
So I hope that's I've clarified that um, that first lesson. So the second lesson is how to bring yourself back to a calm and balanced state. So once you've um, you know gone over the threshold and you're in this moment of great. Hmm. So remember, money has a lot of energy around it, and stuff's going to come up. The lack of money, uh, too much money, because when you have too much money, the fear of losing it is yes. is, is huge. It's, when you don't have money, you know, the fear of not being able to buy things is huge. So like no matter what, no matter what, you're going to have shit come up. So the meditation at the beginning of the class is yours to use anytime. And that meditation is about abundance. Not only abundance from within, but abundance from without. But I think that before we could, before we can get to the point of abundance without, we must cultivate that abundance within us, that pure sense of, of great love and joy and peace within us, that what we have at the moment, what we have in our hands is fantastic. And we are contented with what we have. So contentment, I believe, is such a beautiful energy to be in when you're thinking about money. So get so when you're working with your budgets in the new moon in Libra, use a meditation to actually you can use the meditation for every star sign for every month. I would recommend doing the meditation of abundance before every single time you sit down to think about money. But more so in Libra because you're wanting to try to, to come back to balance and this certainly does. It settles your heart. Then you can start dreaming and manifesting what it is that you want from the world. <laughs>